So, Tim, what do you think the uh, integrated weed management opportunities are in Montana? Um, yeah, when we think about integrated weed management and we think about it, we have some of the highest no-till acres in the state or in the United States. And those no-till acres are really reliant on herbicide management, and especially when we go into a fallow year. So one of the precision things that we've been I talked to some producers about is maybe using the, the weed it, this um, camera system that turns on and off, allows you to go through a fallow field, um, detect weeds and apply herbicides. Why is that a little bit that's useful and something that people will adopt? You'll use much less herbicide. You can use multiple modes of action on some of these uh, really hard to manage kochia. As Montana's cropping system has moved away from just a wheat fallow phase, we've added in more some more pulse crops, we've added in some more crops, we get closer to a continuous cropping system. And so that becomes integrating a cultural tool, having cover on that ground when we can, you'll end up with less weeds. That's one of the things we try to do as best we can, but because we're in a water limited system, you know, you kind of have to throw a fallow year in there every once in a while or something. Sometimes years. So, so precision ag is something that you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. Is that are there a number of things going on? Looking at different tactics within precision ag. Yep, Love Reet, myself and Paul Love Reet Shergill, myself and Paul Nugent are have been really thinking about how do we start to apply these precision ag systems in weed management in Montana. And some of that's doing some good mapping of where you have problematic populations um, using sea and spray sort of spray systems to come back in, or even thinking about using other tools like the weed chipper, for example. You know, we have a lot of no-till acres and we don't necessarily want to put those under cultivation, but using something like a weed chipper, a mechanical so what, tool. what is a weed chipper? The weed chipper is really camera activated in a fallow field and it just swings down you usually a chisel or a chisel plow or something that will cut and just chip that weed out like you think you're playing golf. Oh, is that right? We're just going to chip that kochia out as we go across the fallow field. Huh. I, I do see there could be some room for harvest weed seed control, maybe in, in wild oat as we see it now. Um, but we also, when we studied it while using this as a forage, we had to be earlier in order to not have viable wild oat seed. And so the timing of spring wheat was a little bit later than the wild oat that we have in the field. You can see it right yeah. now, that's viable shatterable yeah, yeah, seed right. and we can't quite, it's not ready to combine that, that spring wheat yet. So it's a tough timing issue, I think, but I think there's some opportunities. I think there's some good opportunities for uh, pigweed and lamb's quarter control that might actually work for harvest weed seed control. So in the last few years, we've looked at saying, could we, and what can we do to do better integrated management of wild oat in our, in our row crops or in some of our different rotations? We often think in the rotation sort of level. And one thing that we did is we've used winter triticale mixed with an Austrian winter pea as a cover crop as that comes off as a forage in early July, that wild oat is just growing and hasn't made seed that is viable yet. So you cut that off, take the forage, use the forage for um, livestock, and then you can come back and apply some sort of burn down herbicide application, tillage, or another method to eliminate that wild oat and crop and to reduce the seed bank, stop seed set, and see if we can put a different selection pressure on wild oak. Your research program is very focused on integrated weed management, trying to combine tactics that uh, help uh, you know, manage the problem. What are sort of some of the things that you're looking at and what are some of the things that maybe farmers are willing to adopt? Uh, I think uh, the key point has been like, uh, you know, when you're looking at conventional systems, uh, you know, herbicides are really important. And, uh, you know, using residual herbicides, you know, some of the farmers, like, they really want to just, like, use post and get, get uh, you know, rid of those. But our emphasis has been to, okay, can we, in, you know, introduce these, like, not really introduce, promote the use of the residual herbicides, which will give that early season control, and that will also help to diversify the selection pressure. And then, on top of that, coming in with a different post mixtures and then integrating other tactics like planting bait, some seeding rates, uh, all those things to uh, go along with those 
really good herbicide program. So we are uh, diversifying our selection pressure in a way that we are not selecting for one trade or the other. On the other side, uh, close to the harvest, you know, that's where harvest seed seed control comes in. Like we, that, we have done everything we could and now these weeds are escaping. So the end goal is to reduce the seed bank replenishment. And uh, harvest feed seed control can help us in that because there is nothing else we can do at that time. So whatever the seed is produced, maybe we can process it in a, uh, either we, uh, you know, run it through a seed destructor to damage it, or we just put it on a cart and take it out of the field, dump it somewhere else, or maybe put it in a narrow zone, which is basically a chaff lining. So we have been interested in like chaff lining more because it's relatively cheaper and, uh, you know, any any farmer at any scale can use it. And we are also, you know, uh, uh, we are also concentrating that weeds into a narrow zone and we are removing that competition from the whole field. So that's one tactic which we have, and we have a seed destructor as well uh, at a farmer's field. We are looking at, that's, this is the first year, so it's gonna take, take some time before you know we get some results.